Good evening, everyone. It's 734. Um, we welcome everyone to another beautiful fall day in lovely Asani. And we will stand for the pledge and we will start our meeting. We have our public hearing in the matter of application by W. VP Development LLC for plain water from special permit pursuant to village code section 270-23I and 270-54. Make a motion we open the public session. So moved. Oh, we have one second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, let's do it. Thank you. Oh, please don't. Uh, Mayor, I believe the uh, planning director, uh, Jaime Martinez, is here, and I think the uh, applicant had a brief presentation uh, uh, for tonight. So if they could proceed with that, uh, and if there are any members of the public who wish to address the board, they can uh, do so at that point. Okay. Who's doing the presentation? Jaime, are you going on first? Please, uh, can you hear me? Now you can, yes. Uh, yes, so I'm just briefly, uh, they're here to talk about the special permit application. Um, just a, a quick um, notation of what the special permit allows you to go uh, and take the baseline density from 15 units per acre up to 32 units per acre. It allows the planning board to grant that uh, additional density. So the, the permit here um, uh, that you're considering is for that. And we have the applicant here who's going to go and give a quick 10 minute uh, presentation on the application um, so that everybody is kind of on the same page with with uh, with what we have. Uh, I did want to give a quick note. We did some additional noticing for this um, hearing. So the special permit uh, really only requires that you notice to the newspaper, but we also did uh, a 300 foot of butters a mailing. Uh, there was some social media posts that took place. Uh, the applicant also updated their website with the latest drawings. Uh, the amendments uh, to the to the design that they did on the garage. Um, so we uh, did a little bit of extra work to try to make sure that the public was aware of this project uh, and aware of this special permit hearing. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over to Jim Wendland. Yes, thank you, Amy, and welcome members of the board. Thank you very much for having us. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Jim Wendling from WBP. I'm joined by Chris Hahn, my colleague, Rich Williams, a partner with Insight Engineering, and Maxwell Powell, a partner with Buyer Blinder Bell, the project architect. We've been working on this development for quite a few years now. We're really excited about it. Uh, we're excited to walk you through the plans, which Maxwell and Rich will, will do in a few minutes. Um, we, we, we've, um, they'll, they'll walk you through both uh, the, the building plan and the public benefits, and we'll answer any questions you have thereafter. So Maxwell, wanna take it from there? Thanks, Jim, and uh, good, evening. good evening, everyone. Let me just share my screen here so you can see it. All right, Jim, you, can all, you can all see it. Um, so thank you again, and we're really uh, happy to be back uh, in front of the board again. Um, I think most of you probably know the site pretty well, so I'll kind of skip through a lot of that. Uh, but I just wanted to reiterate, and I think I'd mentioned this before in, in, in previous presentations that, you know, this is a site that really excites us, um, you know, not just in terms of the program of, you know, building under nine affordable units, but also, um, you know, looking at a site that's uh, a brownfield site that we can revitalize and a site that's so close to a train station. Um, and then the ability to utilize the site and the development that we're putting together to sort of reconnect, um, you know, village of Austin back to the, back to the waterfront through the site. So it's really turning a very closed off site into something that's much more porous. And I think that for us as urban designers and architects is, is really important. Um, so anyways, with, with that in mind, um, I think what we can what I'll do is sort of go through the, the plan so you get a better sense of you know, how, the, how the buildings are configured on the site and why we did certain things. Uh, we have some elevations and we also have some uh, rendered views, some of which have been updated since probably the last time you've seen them. 
Um, so one of the things, you know, when we first looked at the site was to take a look at, um, you know, where the building should be on the site, right? Obviously, there's sort of this, you know, really wonderful natural preserve on the eastern half of the site, and then sort of the western half of the site, you know, currently occupied by the DPW uh, yard. So, you know, when we started thinking about um, the placement of the buildings, it became pretty obvious that, you know, uh, the development should stay on largely within the area that the DPW site was, uh, and largely because that area was the most flat and also already um, sort of pre-developed as well, right? So you'll see that on either side of the Sing Sing Kill, there are sort of, uh, there are, there's a building on either side, and the northern side is the garage, which will be a four-level garage, and in terms of massing, it's about three stories tall, um, which will house um, the majority of the parking spaces, not only for the building, but also for um, the top level, which will comprise of 45 public spaces. And then on the south side of uh, the Sing Sing Kill is the residential building, which is an eight-story building that steps up uh, as we go from the western side towards the eastern side, sort of in lockstep with the way that Main Street rises up in elevation. So the building sort of terraces up from, you know, from grade up to five to six to seven to eight stories, and it sort of terraces the building up. And I think you'll see um, what that does architecturally, which we think is, is really interesting and really quite unique um, for the site. Um, so if we move to the, to the ground floor, um, this is the ground floor plan. And I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, one of the things that we were really, um, uh, adamant about and working with Wilder Baltic Partners was to ensure that the experience on the promenade, the experience along the kill felt public, right? And that was really important. And, and, the, and we did that in, in a couple of ways. One was to ensure that we had active uses fronting the promenade and fronting the Sing Sing Kill, right? So one of the things we did was to ensure that the retail that we had on the corner that was fronting Water Street turned its corner and turned its way facing the Sing Sing Kill, has a little bit of a setback. So if there were tables and chairs that wanted to spill out into that way, it made it feel a little more public. The middle part of the building comprised of the residential lobby, which of course would be open 24 hours a day uh, with some amenities that would front onto that as well. And then most importantly, we placed the community facility space, which is about 3750 on the far Eastern end of the building. And, and we thought that was really important because that really sort of ensured that the, you know there was a public use further into the site and closest to the connection to the Sing Sing Kill uh, Greenway, right? So we thought that was really important to really activate the frontage of the canal way with these uses. On the other side of the building, uh, since we don't have a basement or a cellar uh, in the project, we do have obviously incoming services, back of house, all the other things that you need to, for a building to function properly. So we do have all of that placed um, on the backside, sort of in the the bottom of the cliff, I guess, coming coming off of Main Street, you know, with the with the big uh, grade change from Main Street down to the ground level here. We also have um, a, a fire lane, which also has a component which allows us to do some loading. Uh, so for move-ins, for instance, into the building, a truck could park there. We can move people in easily. We also have um, reserved spaces for about three additional um, ADA spaces. So there's a van and two ADA accessible spaces, uh, which would have a direct internal connection through the amenity space into the lobby. So there's, you know, we, we recognize that with most of our parking in the garage across Sing Sing Kill, it'd still be good to have some additional accessible spaces that is right there uh, within the building. So that's all accessible from the ground level. Um, and then just a note about the garage. Uh, so again, the garage is four levels of, of parking. It's sort of nestled into Central Avenue as Central Avenue sort of gradually slopes up as well. Right. So what it allows us to do is to access each level directly off of Central Avenue or off of Water Street and, and not require any internal ramping or any of, uh, any, any of that sort of um, uh, space within the garage. So I need to zoom back out. So that's the ground floor. Um, so when we get to the second floor, you can start to see the configuration of the residential building itself. So it's comprised of one bedrooms, uh, 41 bedrooms, 62 bedrooms and nine uh, three bedrooms uh, within um, within the residential component. This is the biggest uh, footprint that we have. And as we go up in the plan, you'll see that the building starts to step back uh, towards the right. Uh, this is the second floor of the garage, which you can see there's a, an access point uh, curb cut on Central Avenue that gets you to this level here. Um, so as we make our way up, this happens to be the fifth floor plan. You can start to see that the building starts to set back. There's a small terrace here that's going to be used for the um, for the residences. And as we continue to go up, um, the building sets back again. So you can see by the seventh floor, there's a much larger terrace also used by the residents here that the building starts to step back. 
And if we go up to the eighth floor, it steps back again, right? So then this roof here is being used for solar panels and there's also additional panels up on the top part of the building as well. Um, so that so those were the plans. Um, uh, architecturally, uh, you know, I think we had previously presented, um, you know, sort of the importance in our mind of a building that's up to date, but also a building that picks up on the hues and the materiality and sort of the texture of the buildings around us. Uh, so you'll you'll notice that we are using a brick facade. So I'll zoom in a little bit. The primary material up on the residential building is a is a sort of blended brick facade. We've got sort of oversized. Um, punched windows, that would be the windows for each of the apartments. And then there's um, a play with uh, some wood grain finished metal panels, right? So it's sort of trying to pick up on some of the natural hues and colors that we are seeing within our site and sort of around our site, there's a natural effect of the trees, um, but also doing it in a way that's sort of maintenance free for the building as well, right? So you'll see that there's a lot of, you know, sort of robust materials on the facade that we think is gonna be long lasting and it'll look good and it'll also be timeless as well. Um, at the lower level, at the ground level, for us it was really important to maximize the transparency. So a lot of glass where we've got the retail frontages, the lobbies, as well as the uh, community space on the eastern end of the site. There's a stone uh, base uh, as well um, at, at the base of the building. Um, if we go to the, uh, I guess this would be the south facade or the facade as viewed from Main Street. Again, um, one of the things we wanted to do was to maintain um, the stepping motion of the building so that at no point along Main Street does the building look you know, much taller than a four-story building, for instance. So you can see in the dark dash black line, that's the center line slope of Main Street as we're going up along the facade of this building. And then off of that is a sort of a 48 foot line that we tried to stay under uh, and that sort of helped uh, uh, drive where we were stepping the building. And we've got a, a rendering later on that we can show you sort of the effect of that as well. Um, and then just you know, some of the other, other elevations, again, this is the view on uh, Water Street. So that's the uh, retail frontage um, facing Water Street. And then this is the, um, the Eastern elevation, which would be the commercial, uh, the community space um, frontage on, uh, right by the canal. Um, and then these were sections that we took again to sort of prove out the, um, the stepping of the building as the section is cut through the building as we move up Main Street. So the building again steps down as you come down Main Street and steps up as you go up. Uh, the garage elevations as well. So the garage is a, is a concrete uh, garage. And what we're doing is um, infilling the openings with a metal uh, fin with a sort of wood grain finish on it as well. So again, picking up on the hues that we have on the residential building, but ensuring that the garage has a little bit of screening that allows it to, to maintain its, it as a naturally ventilated garage, but having a little bit of uh, screening to, 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 to uh, shield the cars. Um, in the garage. And then just a couple of the other views, um, elevations on the garage. And then this here is just, um, I think, uh, shows the, the elevations a little bit uh, more clearly with the materials that we're proposing. So again, on the left is the residential building with the brick facade on the second floor and up the ground floor, we've got a stone uh, veneer wall, which is something like this here. Uh, the brick will look something like this. So it's sort of a blended brick with a little bit of grays and browns and, um, uh, in that blend. And then these panels here that look like wood are actually aluminum panels that have a wood color finish on there, again, to sort of bring back some of that um, natural uh, coloration and hues, uh, but in a way that is um, you know, maintenance free. Uh, for the building. And then on the right is a blow up of the garage bay. So this is one typical bay on the garage with the concrete structure, but having these uh, fins that come in sort of a, a thin and a wider fin that would sort of create these um, a slat effect um, on the garage. And when you view it in an oblique manner, it actually feels a lot more solid. And then when you view it like sort of like this in elevation, it feels a lot more open, which we think is a nice effect as well. Um, Right. So um, some of these you've, you've seen before, this is just sort of a before and after series of, of renderings that we put together. This is the corner of Water and Central Avenue. Um, and this is the proposed uh, design with the building stepping up 
um, along water, uh, along Main Street as we go up, and then the garage on the left. Uh, this is the stair and elevator tower for the garage. So every floor will have accessible access back down the grade, and that's obviously very important. And that will bring you back to the um, to the canal way and the promenade. This is a view if you were looking sort of straight at the, the canal as you're coming off of Water, uh, Water Street. Um, and this is the view um, uh, as proposed, the canal way rebuilt on the left here. Um, this is the retail space on the corner that's turning its corner from Water Street up the canal. And then if we walk further up on the, um, on the, on the promenade, uh, you'll get to the residential entry, which is right here on the right. And then the community space is just um, further along uh, at the end of the building. And if you keep walking further along, you'll you know, hit the preserve um, as well as the connection um, through the preserve underneath the Central Avenue Arch uh, back uh, to the Sing Sing, existing Sing Sing Kill Greenway. Um, we also did a view on Central Avenue looking sort of down as you're kind of going down Central Avenue towards the waterfront uh, to get a sense of the garage uh, being sort of tucked into the garage sort of rises up um, as it gets towards the corner. And then it sort of becomes a, a single story garage as you make your way up uh, Central Avenue. Uh, this is the view from Main and Water Street looking up uh, Main Street. And you can see the building, uh, the garage is here on the left, and then this is the building on the right. So again, it feels like a four-story building um, as you're going up because of the stepping uh, massing of the building. And then this is the view from Main and Secor looking sort of down towards the waterfront uh, currently. And then this is the proposed massing behind it. You can kind of get a sense of the, the scale of the building if you just kind of continue the line across over here. But again, you get a sense that the building is about three or four stories tall. And because the building's actually 50 feet away from Main Street, it, it appears even shorter than, um, than, it, than it would be in an elevation because of the perspective. Um, and that's it. Uh, so that, that's the, um, the update on, on the project. Um, I think I'm handing it over to Rich. Thank you, Maxwell. Rich, you're on mute. Thanks, Jim. Just to switch over the screen share for a second, everybody should be now looking at a copy of the site plan. Yes. Okay. Um, so just to touch on a couple of points, the, the total property is 3.2 acres. Um, as part of our application, there is a proposed subdivision that I just want to point out to the board and the public. Uh, we're proposing to subdivide the 3.2 acre property into two lots in eastern half, which will be retained by the village which comprise, uh, comprises the majority of the forested area on site, which will allow that to be preserved. And the Western half of the property, which is primarily the DPW yard where the parking garage and the mixed use building um, will be located. On the Eastern half of the site, we do have a series of public benefits being proposed. Um, we have the Sing Sing Kill Greenway extension, which is shown here and comes through the site. That's gonna land on grade about here and then continue down to the promenade that Maxwell had described in a, a few minutes ago. Um, also located on this Eastern parcel is a series of debris piers. Uh, these piers were, were designed in, in concert and with the help of the village DPW. Um, we spent a lot of time looking to understand some of the historic flooding that had happened down on Water Street, um, particularly at the Water Street culvert um, and the cause of it, which uh, happened to be during the first flush of storm events as a lot of debris came down through the Sing Sing Kill and clogged at the culvert. So these piers are being designed to help catch that debris farther upstream where there's valley and where there's a larger valley and the ability to trap that debris um, to help alleviate the Water Street culvert flooding, create a safer site for us and create a better condition for the community as a whole. Working hand in hand with those debris piers, is a stilling basin that we're gonna be creating to the side of the kill. We're gonna create a deeper basin off to the side of the kill to minimize any impacts to the kill itself um, and then make it an integral part of the Sing Sing Kill. The intention of this basin is to offer a little bit more cross-sectional area and depth to allow some of that debris to settle out and be collected and maintained. Also to slow down some of the energies as the water comes down through the tunnel underneath Water Street um, and make the bend as it heads to the west towards the river. And again, the third public benefit is the Greenway extension. Um, on the DPW site now, or on the western half of the site, um, we also have a series of improvements that I just want to touch on. Um, the first is the promenade, uh, the promenade itself. Um, there's been a lot of thought 
design that's going into the landscaping. We are going to have trees along the south side of the promenade mixed in with seating benches to help create a linear park feel and help enhance that pedestrian connection and make the space more inviting, as Maxwell described. Um, we're going to have a series of public improvements along Water Street, Central, and Main by replacing the sidewalk along the frontages of our property, in addition to all the pavement along Water Street. Um, basically, we have a pavement limits from here to here. So that'll be new, feel refreshed, go hand in hand with the redevelopment of the site. Um, along the promenade itself, we're also going to be refacing the walls of the kill. Um, we're going to continue some of that streetscape and landscaping that I talked about along the promenade onto the three streets. Um, we've really tried in working with the planning board to maximize tree replacement and the planting of trees on this site. Uh, there is limited area to do it, but we, you know, we worked with them in several iterations to continue to add trees. Um, what we're going to be doing is creating a streetscape rhythm with street trees along Water Street. We're going to be doing plantings in the area in front of the parking garage to help soften and green up that area as well. Um, since uh, actually, the last set of improvements I'll talk to you about is stormwater. Um, currently, the DPW site is untreated. It's a fairly industrial use, and the runoff from it discharges directly into the kill. Um, as part of our project, we're going to bring the site up into conformance with the current stormwater standards. So all runoff will be passed through a series of stormwater treatment devices prior to discharging into the kill. And in addition, as Maxwell mentioned, we've been able to incorporate some green roofs onto two of the terraces of the building, which is something that we're exciting about. It's a New York State DEC recognized green infrastructure practice. Um, since we started this process, uh, we've had a, a number of opportunities to, to gain public input. There was a series of public informational session, sessions as part of the RFP process and following the RFP process. Uh, we've been before the planning board numerous times. Planning board has issued a negative declaration for this project. We've been before the EAC who has issued a letter uh, with respect to this project being in conformance with the uh, LWRP. Uh, we've met with the zoning board uh, twice to review the variances for the project. There are several variances that are necessary. Um, one, because of the subdivision decreasing the lot size, as well as the irregular nature of the site with the kill uh, forming a divide, as well as trying to mirror where the existing buildings are located and redevelop the site, primarily on this western portion here. Uh, the ZBA in, in both deliberations has been supportive of the project and the variances we're happy to report. Um, we've also worked with the fire department. Um, we've met with them uh, at staff meetings numerous times. We also had an on-site test uh, where we uh, set up a simulation or mock of the site uh, and brought the aerial apparatus out to make sure turning maneuvers would work. Uh, this latest plan you see before you has a uh, redesigned bridge reconfiguration. Uh, to facilitate the fire department access based on our discussions. We've recently resubmitted plans to the village um, to make sure that there aren't any additional comments or if they are, we'll continue to work with the fire department on their uh, concerns. Um, and last, I just wanna to touch on the floodplain because of our proximity to the Hudson River. Um, as part of all our studies and analyses provided, we did do a full floodplain analysis. You know, One, because it's important to us as designers and our clients as developers to create a safe, uh, place for residents and the public to enjoy, but also uh, we wanted to make sure we met the requirements of your floodplain development ordinance, uh, which we do. So I think with that, I'll turn it back over to Jim, but we're happy to answer any questions that the board or the public may have for us this evening. Thank you, Rich. Okay. I assume that's the end of the presentation. Yes? Yes, yes it is. Great. Well, really well done appreciate also all the commentary on um, all the community um, stakeholders and staff that were involved in this process i'm going to open it up uh, for conversation i see you're, you're looking at me well, so. my question is whether there's anyone in the public who wants to comment because it's the public right community. i thought maybe i said it incorrectly so if there's anyone... saying, i didn't know if you meant the board comment but oh. Oh, i've gotten that there are four or five people on the Zoom. There is one person in this room. Um, so Jamie, I think we should go to Zoom. Are there any virtual hands up for the public to comment? Um, let me ask, um, for those of you that are in the gallery, if you'd like to participate in the meeting, if you can raise your hand. Um, Martha, what's the time frame that they get? I believe it was three minutes, right, Stuart? You'll have three minutes to speak. That is correct. Max, three minutes. 
it doesn't look like right now anybody wants to speak. Maybe they want the person in the room to speak first. No, I mean, it's a public hearing. So for those of you watching, if you have comments or questions on this, this would be the time to raise your virtual hand. We'll, we'll, we'll have the board also speak. That gives folks a few more minutes um, for questions. So anybody on the board want to add any comments, questions, thoughts? On my left. Yes, sir. Uh, just one question. Um, the tie into Main Street, the bridge or path that was going to tie in on the upper levels, I didn't see any rendering on that. And uh, is that still in the proposal? It, yes, it is. It's coming in at the fifth floor of the building. Okay. So looking at that, the plot plan you have there, it looked like you had it on there. It, it, it is. I can reshare my screen and point out where it is. If, if oh, okay. I just want to, I didn't just want see to make it. sure it's there. I didn't see any it right there. So, okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. And we were all very involved from day one of this with both the uh, public engagement. There were about six of them. And as we've been going through this process and in initial all along, this is an update. So, good to see you. Big update. Anybody else? Sir? Thank you. Um, so I guess um, I have a few questions. Like maybe I have just two questions. I'll ask just two questions. Let me rephrase that. Uh, from the beginning of the project, from where was this was first presented in front of us, um, what is the biggest change that you guys have made to the facades uh, of the building itself? Just give me like a simple answer on that one. Maxwell, you want to take that? Sure. I mean, I think largely the material choices have been uh, the same. It's been consistent. We have been working on the window spacings uh, relative to the apartment layouts on the inside. So some of that has, mod has been modified, but um, there largely hasn't been a significant amount of uh, change from what we had originally presented. Thank you. Uh, I, just as a side question, I, I see that. Um, you showed actually uh, done and you went and your presentation was a sample of a window. Is that a specific manufacturer that you guys have in mind? Uh, no, not yet. It's a basis of design of like a, a more a typical window that we've been using in other projects. Um, what, but, what is the manufacturer that, that you have used? Uh, I'll have to check and get back to you on that. Okay, that's, that, that's not relevant for the presentation, just out of curiosity itself. So. Uh, so thank you. So one of the things that I, I guess I'll, I'll ask my second question is um, more in the subdivision that you that you had mentioned, uh, and then I guess it's going to be a two-part question, Stuart, for you uh, as well, because I'm not I don't remember having any of the conversation. Maybe I'm forgetting on the latter portion. We didn't have anything in, in there in regards to subdivision of the no, lots. No, that's right? in there. It is. It's all in the, okay. the lot. And that's then I don't have a question. So that was just more like a clarification for me. Um, on that one, so, um, okay, thank you. I will go. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I thought that it was very clear and um, it's exciting to see it uh, come to life. And uh, as we get closer and closer to actually building this thing, uh, it's uh, starting to become much more real. So uh, thank you for the detail there. I have two questions. One, and they're both relatively minor. One is we've been referring, uh, you refer to it just the way that we've been referring to it, which is the DPW site. Do you have any thoughts in terms of what you might name this particular property? We have um, Station Plaza as a working name right now in-house, um, but no, we, we haven't finalized the name yet. We'll work with our in-house marketing team and work and discuss that frankly with with you and and other board members and other boards but no we don't have we don't have a name other than the working title we're using right now great okay we need we, we need to get in the ground before we worry <laughs> worry about the name oh you're the one that's almost i thought there was a mill or something there that you had oh lost. no that was well that was kind of a joke I don't know oh okay we definitely try to link the name to you know the, the previous area. Year. No, sorry that area was known as station plaza and because where but Station okay. Plaza is the traditional name for it, that area. No worries. Um, the second, the only, uh, hesit not hesitation, but kind of uh, open question that I heard 
was with respect to the fire department. Does that mean from all of the other um, land use boards, all of the other uh, kind of bodies that you've gone to, um, those have pretty much been approved uh, and, and solid and really other than ensuring that the changes to the bridge are uh, good with everyone, then that's the only remaining piece, is that correct? Um, yeah, the, no, I'm sorry. I imagine. Yeah, the, the zoning board, um, I think Rich said we've been before them twice. They um, are supportive of the variances needed. We've been before the planning board probably four or five times. We're working our way. We got the neg deck done in June or July. Rich will correct me, but I think June or July. And we're working through the site plan approval process now. Um, we'll be back before them this month. And um, so we don't, we don't have any, you know, there has not been a resolution passed, but we're, we're well into the process with both ZBA and planning. Thank you. Can I just ask for a clarification? Uh, can I make, because uh, last time that you came in in uh, front of us on a, a work session or a special permit, uh, please refresh my memory. Those, even though they're in favor, they have not voted yet. Is that correct? I mean, did they, did they pay that? Did they make the, the voting and granted all the variances for the uh, uh, this project? Because I think no, they, a couple of things, sure. None of the boards have granted any of the approvals yet. Correct. It's all in the question. <laughs> so the thought, I guess, oh, that, that's what I was looking at. I didn't know if you were asking whether they were voted. So it's a process, so it's a long process, and we all know that. All the boards, uh, all the volunteer boards and the attorneys that sit on them, and some of the stewards that sit on, and et cetera, et cetera, are going through uh, a long process. Um, to make sure all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. So you're updating us, but you're not stating that there are approvals for everything yet. No, and 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 candidly, it, there's a timing and order in which the approvals have to happen. So for instance, you know, part of your board's you know ultimate approval of this will then allow the planning board to issue their approval. Um, Similarly, the zoning board, you know, has to wait for the neg deck from the planning board, and I think is is waiting to see the board of trustees' reaction to the special permit. But I don't, I don't want to misspeak, Jaime. Mean, if there's anything, I yeah, well, the the neg deck has been completed, so that wasn't an approval, but that was completed. The neg deck was issued by the planning board. Uh, the next uh, step, the next two steps that need to be taken for the planning board to act are for the zoning board to grant the variances and for uh, the board of trustees to grant the special permit. Uh, neither of those are dependent on each other, so either of them can happen first, um, but both of them have to happen before the planning board can move forward with the various decisions that they need to make. Okay, Stuart, any hurdles that we should be aware of? None as far as I know, no. Okay. All right, questions, comments, Mayor? Anything else um, before you go? Um, I think it's gonna be a great addition to the, the village, the waterfront area. Um, I'm excited there's gonna be affordable housing for people. Um, and I'm excited there's gonna be that linear park and the, the greenway continuing down. And it's just gonna be an awesome place to hang out, I think on a nice day, depending on what kind of retail we get in there, um, coffee, beer, whatever, I'll go for it. Um, you know, and I just think it's gonna be super great place to just be. My other question, I'm also glad nothing historic is being torn down, but um, it's such a very old compost heap. But um, but the, the garage where the garage is going to be built, there is that structure, like a cinder block structure there, right? Nothing you know overwhelmingly beautiful, but I know it's probably going to come down, right? So the question is, if there are things in there, they need to be removed at some point. Uh, the contents, I think there may be some items in the garage that we need to, to to find a new home for us, so just a thought. Okay. Don't throw anything away, that's what I'm saying. Understood. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll have to come get it off the curb. <laughs> okay, so was that you wanted to speak? No, I was just gonna ask the board if we wanna keep this uh, public meeting open. Right, so yeah, I'm gonna go back. So if anybody, um, we're gonna close this meeting if we don't get any uh, we usually, uh, in the public space, in the public hearing like this, we would like to hear from the public. We want to give ample time. If there are no comments, we'll close it. But just one more round. Uh, Jamie, any virtual hands? 
No, Mayor, there aren't any virtual hands. <clears throat> so I, for one, don't find it necessary to keep this open. Um, I don't know everybody else feel. I have to say that not only am I um, happy to hear the updates, this is not an easy project. Um, that was said uh, many times in the beginning of this project. There are not a lot of developers and builders that can build something on two sides of flowing water. Um, and I'm being polite when I say flowing water. Um, it's a kill that is beautiful in its natural state, but um, it floods, it's uh, got to be uh, in a bad way over the many decades and longer. And frankly, finishing the walkway that you can now do circular, you could actually walk all the way down to the waterfront and maybe go up Main Street, maybe go uh, to different parts of the waterfront, I think will be um, a really, really cool thing. So very excited in addition to everything that uh, Trustee White said, I don't want to agree with nothing here. So I think this is like great. I think the garage always scares me. I find garages to be the technology of garages. They're, they're just, they're not good looking. That's right on the waterfront, tens of thousands of people take the train. They'll be seeing this structure. Um, garages tend to, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. We always look for people to be more and more creative in the way garages look. Um, you know, maybe some uh, vertical uh, flowers, um, because I think indoors and outdoors universities have experimented with um, plantings that actually are vertical and hanging to add uh, life, um, not to mention uh, great uh, to create better oxygen in the air and to uh, eat up the emissions in the area, especially from all the cars that are parked there, would be a lovely idea if that could be done. But I'm not a designer, I'm not an architect, so I'm just looking up at my uh, screen up here um, to give not a subtle hint, but that would be helpful. It's not required by law, but it would make it look, I think, uh, prettier and more in line with um, a greener look than just those uh, I guess they're called sheets or slits or something. I couldn't hear exactly what you were saying. Um, so anything that can be done to make a square box of a parking garage look a little bit uh, more alive would be appreciated, but it's not legally mandated. So whatever you guys can do would be great. Um, okay, I think we're ready to close. Uh, this Just have one. Oh, one. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I forgot to ask the parking structure. Am I presuming that's going to be a precast structure? I think it's still being studied right now. Our initial assumption was a precast structure, but we're trying to figure out how easy that will be, given that we are literally kind of tucking into the side of the hill. So um, the construction is looking at it. What was the question, Maxwell? I didn't hear uh, Precast uh, is, is precast being used for the garage. Got it. Yep. All right. Okay. Great. So we're ready to close. Actually, oh. I would like to adjourn. What's happening? No, I was actually <laughs> no. My my question was to the board. If we can adjourn this for at least until the next meeting, oh. uh, just to give that um, pretty much just yeah, kind of table this whole conclusion, just the whole meeting until next month, just to give the public a little bit more additional time as we. We have said in meetings like this that sometimes people do not see the notices on time. Uh, I would like to, again, that's my request. If the rest no, of the board feels the other way. Towards stewards. So Stuart, all of, everything triggers a timeline, all the events, right? So if we wait another, till another we two weeks be or whatever. We until November 2nd. I do want to point out, as Jaime said, 300 foot of butter notice not required was done here postings were done here, it was done publicly. So there was a great deal of notice to the public, far more than is required for a special permit hearing. It's the board's decide decision what to do. This, if, it, if you would then be going to November 2nd, and if you go to November 2nd, then it, you know, you'd know you be looking at the next planning board meeting. You do have a certain time frame within which you have to make your decision, you're, you're well within that time frame at this point. But I, I, if there's a concern that the folks in the area have not heard about this, uh, as the planning director said, and it was something that the mayor mentioned when we, the board was first considering calling for the public hearing, was to make sure that the public knows about this. And uh, there was a lot of notice to that area 
Uh, but again, it's it's the board's call as to whether it wants to put this off for two weeks. But I do want to point out there was the planning department and the applicant went above and beyond what's required by the code <coughs> with regard to noticing for this particular public hearing. I have a question. Can we close the public hearing and leave it open for comment via email for a week? You may do that as well. Give people a chance if they didn't see the meeting, they could watch it. If we don't get anything in a week, you know, that gives us time in two weeks we vote on it. Correct, Stuart? Yes, if you don't hear anything, then if the board is okay, there can be a resolution on November the 2nd to uh, grant a special permit. Yeah, but if we wait to November the 2nd, then yeah. you're not doing anything until the 16th. Yeah, but it's the same way as, yeah, but isn't it the same thing as a table and these until the 2nd and we have a resolution ready to close the meeting, we can do the same thing? You can do it a variety of ways. Generally, this board does not close and vote the same night. So if you were to do that and close on the second, the general practice that you do it in two weeks would put you to the 16th of November. Uh, so it's really your call. We have, with other public hearings, kept the, uh, the e if you want to call it the email portion open for a week. Uh, and what we do, and it's kept open for a week if anything is heard. Uh, the board always has the ability to reopen the public hearing if it decides that it wants to, but otherwise, uh, it can come back on uh, November the 2nd. You can just basically close it for the public portion and the public can continue to respond. Indeed, the notice for the particular public hearing here specifically indicated that there was a provision that the public could communicate through the board uh, by, at, 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 the, at the website. But what, what, essentially it's the board's pleasure as to what it, how, how it wants to do this. So if I may, I'm of the mind that this project is going exactly the way we have been discussing it for months. There are no surprises and frankly, it's a project without um, endless controversy. Some projects have endless controversy and we really do need to keep it open to the public for engagement because people are not available. They didn't read it that week. We have been discussing this for months and months and there was so much public engagement whether it should be affordable or market, whether it's too big, it's not big enough, more retail, less retail. So a lot of that conversation has already occurred. At this point, it is whether the developer is coming through and what we have promised the public. And as long as that is where we're heading, I mean, I have not received a single email about this project um, as far as a problem with the way the developer is developing based on commitments made for me, I don't actually feel a need to, do, to delay it another week, thinking more people will show up or didn't know about it. They didn't see everything for this week. They're not gonna see it for next week either. Um, so for me, it, it's six of one half dozen of another and unnecessary. Um, I just think we can close it and vote, but look, it's a majority vote. I could go either way. I just really don't see a reason to do this another week. I'll, I'll just say my piece. Yeah, here's my piece is my instinct is to uh, close it, to close the public hearing. The circumstance in which I would be most comfortable keeping it open for another week for email feedback is if we were be if we were to do something different to elicit that feedback, which is exactly what the mayor is suggesting that if we're just waiting to see if any, anybody kind of shows up, then I think it's largely a waste of time. But if we're gonna send uh, email, a uh, postcard, something additional above and beyond, what's already been done above and beyond, then um, then I would entertain. But I just don't know what that would be. Yeah, so what do you have in mind to notify the public, Mary, to get more people involved? Because they've already done, you know, more than most people. I'm not, I'm not debating. <laughs> no, no, and, and I'm not debating. I think this right. project they have done that and more mm -hmm. public engagement. I'm not arguing with any of that. Right. I'm not. Right. Uh, what I'm concerned is that let, let me go back a few years back because you were there with mm -hmm. me on the roundabout. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and I haven't talked about that in a long time. Right. But that's exactly what happened. Sure. Yeah. It was a very interesting project. Um, I was the one who brought it up mm -hmm. and I was the one who closed it down. 
at the same time, but it became controversial when it became more real. Sure. So when something becomes more real, that's when people realize what is going on here. So I want to make sure that we are doing everything and more for that situation doesn't happen again. And we have been doing that for years. You know, when we talk about the seal, sure, we did that. What happened? We got the feedback. We changed. I still hear about the seal now. So little things like that, to me, is a concern. We may not have to do anything else. Again, like you said, it is the majority. So if the majority feels that we don't need to do this, then that's fine. But my concern is, yes, we can do whatever we want. We've been doing this for a long time. The whole project has been very public. So my question, let me ask you this, Jaime, a, a quick question. When you have gone to the, uh, the zoning board, planning board meetings, uh, what kind of feedback has it been for this particular project? Has there been any feedback, any concerns, any letters? What is your take on, on the process itself? Uh, almost nothing. So I, I think largely nothing uh, outside of the beginning of the process when we did have some initial feedback and um, questions were raised about some of the environmental stuff. Uh, we really haven't received any feedback. And uh, to the applicant's credit, they re-noticed um, when the meetings went to in person. So, you know, we've been doing most of these meetings through Zoom, but the applicant did re-notice uh, once it was clear that they were not going to be online only, but they were going to be in person and that, you know, maybe there were people who weren't able to get there, you know, digitally would be able to come in person. Um, and so they just wanted to make sure to cover their bases and do that. We haven't received any feedback. We haven't had anybody show up to meetings. Uh, we haven't received any emails. Um, so I, I think there is obviously a lot of interest in this project, but you know, we have two very large signs in front of the property. We have multiple, um, you know, smaller planning department signs saying that there's active stuff going on. There's been notif notification of the neighbors. We just, we haven't received any, you know, well, feedback. Thank, thank you, Thank you, Hammy. Appreciate that. Go to the board. Well, I would tend to agree with the mayor to close tonight. I just two things. The mayor made a very valid point. Has any of us gotten any emails about this project? And we've been working on this project two years plus. So I'm in favor of closing the public hearing and I'd make a motion to do so. Well, motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of closing the public hearing at this time? Uh, Aye. Aye. Staying. Public hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, folks, thank you so much. Um, I will say to you, uh, personally, those renderings that look a little bit better than renderings um, with how the buildings look from all those different um, human viewpoints, like if I were actually standing on those three, the use of computers, this is the beauty of them. If there were only some way we could make that more public, that would be lovely because it's like sort of the first time I actually got a real feel that I was standing on different corners and actually seeing the size and scope of it and how, for the most part, so it's a large project. It will create housing for 109 families. Um, it's all affordable. It's um, not often done in municipalities, something to be very proud of, but it looks good. And it's a tough project, you know, architecturally, and also the brownfielding, which we go through very quickly. But it's a big deal that we are also doing that and cleaning up uh, the environment in the process. It would be lovely if we could find a way to pictorially present that somehow to the public, because then people will actually see a little bit more realistically what it will look like. Just food for thought. We're not demanding that you do, you know, a big um, billboard out there. But um, I really, I really, uh, for the first time, really got a sense of size and scope and look and feel and all of that. And uh, I thought it looked, you know, pretty good. So given all the challenges, so congratulations on that. And let's hope that zoning and planning, you know, gives you a really, really hard time. That's their job is to speak on behalf of the community to make sure the community gets every inch from you. Um, that's how it works. I'm, I'm proud of the work they're doing. And let's just see. Um, oh, don't give me the look. <laughs>
to that. I like saying that they know what I'm saying. When the public knows that it's, um, we have volunteers who are working very hard to make sure that on behalf of the public, we get as much as we can um, in the final product. So I'm happy that um, you're all working um, to the same end. So I thank you for your time. You're welcome to stay um, for the rest of the meeting. Uh, most people, uh, my colleagues hear me say this all the time. You're welcome to stay. Um, you certainly aren't required to stay for the rest of our meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Martha, we're back. Okay, we're going to Mayor's and Jesse's announcement. Okay, Hi. folks, I have something. Um, the Westchester Craft Crawl is back. I think this is like the third year, and it's becoming a really uh, very big, um, well known event. I actually heard a commercial on the radio for this event. Um, it is this weekend, October 22nd and 23rd. It's in Ossining and Croton. And the craft crawl will have four locations, uh, tour stops. Three of them are in Ossining, um, Beach Road, Stone Avenue, and Bank Portland Avenue. And several and of our local businesses are sponsors. So uh, if you want to find out more, go to Westchester Craft Crawl. crawl. Dot com and I have always I've done this every year and uh, you know I have to have a special budget for it but uh, we'll see if I we'll see if I can stay within my budget so no, no promises honey <laughs> it's a uh, rain or shine right uh yeah okay it's really cool but it's going to be a nice weekend I think no, no, no. but it is rain or shine it doesn't get moved around or anything like that and it is really um, cool and it was really good um, in during COVID, it really, uh, and, and it's one of those things that worked out really well and continues as we move forward. Okay. Everything's outdoors, so, yeah. All right, man, anything? Yep. Anybody else? I'll go. Please. Um, I'll make this announcement a couple of times, but on Tuesday, November 1st at 3.30, 3.30 to 5.00, uh, in the afternoon. Neighbors Link is having an open house at their new center in Ossining. It's been expanded and renovated. They have 5,000 square feet for English classes, technology programs, parent-child together sessions, workforce development programs, and immigration legal services. This is going to be a great event to check out this new space. Uh, this morning, I was uh, at an event for Neighbors Link along with uh, Austin Town Supervisor Dana Levenberg uh, on unaccompanied uh, child uh, uh, migrants to the United States. And it is um, just heartbreaking and fascinating and frustrating. And the work that Neighbors Link, which for transparency purposes I'm on the board of, um, does uh, with respect to not only unaccompanied uh, child migrants, but uh, the uh, immigrant community broadly is uh, incredible. So. Um, if you're able to come, 3.30 on Tuesday, November 1st to the new open house, it's um, right across the street from the uh, parking lot and uh, really excited to be there. Great. That's it. That's it? Yep. Great. Um, so I don't actually have any announcements um, except my usual stay safe for Halloween. And I do um, hope everybody is enjoying all those wonderful, I'm going to call them sculptures. But they're actually the Halloween decorations all through. Um, Maddie Sahaj and I spoke earlier today. We think, um, I hope I'm not hurting people's feelings here, Maddie, from previous years, where we think this is the best year. There is some really amazing, cool looking, um, um, that's why I'm calling them sculptures now, um, all through the village. I don't know other villages or towns or cities. Uh, every community does something a little different for Halloween. It's a fun time. I will tell you that what I learned when I met with the girl uh, troop one four seven zero is um, that actually they use that as a uh, education moment. It's not just Halloween. They actually have to come up with designs, build it, um, not get anything dirty, try to use recycled products. So it's really cool watching them sort of all come to an agreement where they each get um, their own uh, sculpture to do. So uh, shout out to the Girl Scouts. We have the uh, largest Girl Scouts actually um, in the state of New York. It's something like 450 um, Girl Scout 
uh, members. I wish I knew the numbers for the Boy Scouts. I just don't. I'm sorry about that, but that I did learn. And um, it's uh, something to really be proud of. I myself was not a Boy Scout, but everyone else I knew was. So um, I think it's really cool. Next year, Maddie and I will volunteer to go and judge all of them. <laughs> No way, never be a judge. And now when it comes to those things. Anyway, I think we're ready to go. Village manager, Karen DeTori. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. So uh, this week we were notified that we were awarded a $50,000 grant as part of the DPC's Hudson River Estuary Program's local estuary stewardship program for the Austin Riverfront. Resilient. So uh, this is something we, we tried for uh, last year when we, we weren't able to, to get it, but we were successful this year. And this will um, enable us to work with our partners on the riverfront at, at Western Marina and Shadowmuck Yacht Club to uh, look for designs to create uh, walkability along the riverfront, uh, to continue walkability throughout Austin, and then ultimately be able to connect community to community but also do it in a way that's resilient and, and enhances our waterfront, but also protects it from uh, future impacts of climate change and climate change and flooding, et cetera. So we're really excited about that. Um, it's part of a larger effort we have to make sure that our waterfront is resilient and obviously are part of our global effort to make sure that we're the greenest village in all of the world. So we're on our way. Um, world now? Yes, the world. Why not? <laughs> you know, we're not. We're not necessarily going for the universe, but we might. For it, like a person well, over here goes, "Oh my God!" If we get a trophy. So, well, we did also. Um, there's more. There's more. Um, I didn't want to take the once, spotlight. Once again, received a gold level certificate. Not quite a trophy, but a certificate for collecting the most pledges for a municipality in the Hudson Valley region for Car Free Day in 2022. Um, so. Uh, that was part of the 511 uh, New York Ride Chair Program, and um, they uh, commended us on our ability to get the most number of, of pledges for people who would not use cars that day or would minimize their use of cars. So that was good. And uh, we had a very busy week, week last week and this week uh, working on the staff budgets. Um, they, we have now completed the staff portion and our finance department is looking forward to um, putting together a budget that the board will then work on with us um, in the coming weeks. So um, it's budget season and we're busy. Uh, Chima Monday is our new youth bureau director and he'll be starting on Monday the 24th. Um, so we're excited to welcome Chima and he'll be starting right and early at 8.30 on Monday because that is the same day as the Community That Cares Coalition meeting at the library. So he is fortunate to be starting on a day where he, where he will be able to meet all of our youth bureau stakeholders in one room and spend time getting to know each other. So that will be a great onboarding for Chima. So we look forward to him starting. And we also have our youth bureau needs assessment underway. Um, our, our needs assessment consultant has met with most of our major stakeholders and is planning some focus groups working with the school district and will also be at the CDC coalition meeting on Monday as well. So lots going on with the youth bureau, um, moving that forward. Um, after um, many long months of inconvenience uh, for all of us and anybody driving through, Dale Avenue paving is underway. And thank you to our elected official, Sandy Galef and our chief of staff, Jim Twill, along with our village mayor and trustees. A special shout out to Omar Lopez, who has taken this on as a personal cause, um, and our director of public works, Paul Fraile, as well as other neighborhood residents. Um, we want to thank them for their lobbying efforts to get Con Ed and the New York State Department of Transportation to collaborate and assume full responsibility for curb to curb restoration of this well traveled roadway. Um, and finally, uh, we also have our firehouse consolidation study is, is launched, and today assistant village manager Manny Sahaj uh, spent most of the day uh, with the consultants and with the chiefs uh, visiting our firehouses. So Manny, perhaps you want to add a few words about your firehouse audit? Thank you, Karen. Uh, 
Karen. That was unexpected. Um, yeah, we did. We, we, yeah. <laughs> we started bright and early this morning. I was joined um, by incoming Chief Sorduzio. I don't know how, how we 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 have so many chiefs. <laughs> um, and then current Chief Gallery uh, joined us uh, also for the majority of the day. Um, but Ken Gale, um, who's part of the consulting team um, and is their sort of facilities person, um, was able to actually take um, the checklist that they did in 2009 and sort of apply it going forward to say how things gotten better, stay the same or worse in, in all of the facilities. Um, we certainly have some work to do, there's no question about it. Um, but I think something that you know everyone in the community probably knows um, is that our fire department is, is one of the most historic um, in New York State. And it was such a, a pleasure and an honor really to get to visit um, a lot of the different buildings and really learn about the history of each individual company. Um, it's it's pretty, pretty fantastic how many generations of Austin families have, have you know, given service to, to this community in that way. And, and it was really a pleasure to, to get to see it through the chief size as well, because, you know, as I'm sure Trustee Fritchie can, can tell me specifically, um, they all come from a, a pretty long line of, of Austin Fire Department uh, members and their families. Um, so we are uh, moving full steam ahead. Um, we're gonna keep working with the chiefs over the next couple of weeks uh, to figure out the programming portions of the study. And we're hoping to wrap by uh, end of December um, so that whatever we decide to do, we can uh, be set up for funding in the next round of CFA. Um, and happy to answer any questions from the board as they come up. Thanks. Really? Well, I, we bumped into each other today in the middle of the village and Maddie was super excited um, because it is a learning experience. It is part of the history, but really it's part of the future. When you look at where we started today in today's meeting, you know, one of my concerns, if some of you recall, was do we have fire uh, engines that can go up eight flights? You know, we don't have a lot of high buildings here. And I know from other experiences we build and then we realize we neither have the right equipment nor people trained. You know, we're on the Hudson. How does the waterfront work? Is the fire department prepared for it? What kind of equipment are they going to need? Is it the same? Is it different? So there's a lot involved here. There's the history part, there's the past, but there's really the future as we build, as we change things, as we think about the waterfront and resiliency, the fire department becomes a player in that. So the police, so is the staff, so this parks, everybody. So you seem really excited after you actually, and you were born here. I mean, you've lived here your whole life. And yet, you know, not everybody gets a chance to tour the firehouses. And also I think what, um, at least what you shared with me, I, I, I was waiting for you to say, but I think one of the, the business aspects of this, if you will, is that, you know, these kind of studies also as a bonus um, are showing us maybe areas that we can invest in some equipment or change some things around um, to save uh, money um, in the short and long term. So there was just a lot of good things that I think are coming out of uh, the project um, that I'm looking forward to hearing more about. So good stuff. Hey, um, just one other reminder, because it is Halloween and this is the Hudson Valley. Um, on, on Friday night, there'll be the uh, Great Pumpkin Patch uh, gathering at Nelson Park um, uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. So uh, that'll be a fun time for a lot of families. And it's just among the many things uh, that we're planning here for Halloween, because this is, this is really our season here. Um, it's slightly north of Sleepy Hollow, so. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Okay, Martha, this is where you come on and say Corporation Council. Corporation Council, see you to it. <laughs> Thank you all and good evening. Uh, tonight's agenda has the uh, uh, resolution for the honorary street naming for the uh, corner of, uh, I keep forgetting, I believe it's St. Paul and uh, State Street and Academy Place. My apologies for Dr. George Hill. Uh, and uh, if you have a, had a chance to read the resolution, a lot of it quotes from uh, our village historian's report with regard to this uh, uh, most important individual in Austin history. So it would be a pleasure to uh, have the board vote on that tonight. Uh, I am pleased to advise the board that the contract for the intersection improvements at Main and State Streets, at Main and Spring Streets rather, has been signed uh, and is fully executed. 
Uh, the contract has now been returned to DPW and uh, the notice to proceed has gone out and uh, things will be moving with regard to that project. Uh, so uh, please, please with regard to that. We are oh, another little applause. Continuing Just for the review, record when people watch this video. Continuing to review other contracts uh, as Good. they come in. Uh, tonight's agenda also includes a call for public hearing with regard to proposed local law 11 of 2022. Uh, when we discussed this last week in work session, it was originally discussed that the public hearing would be held on November the 2nd. Uh, this resolution changes that to November the 16th. This I do have a few matters I want to discuss with the board next week as to some additional changes to uh, the village's tax law, uh, putting it more in conformance with what the town has in terms of certain exemptions that exist particularly with regard to uh, uh, veterans exemptions. Uh, uh, the uh, amount of the exemption has increased significantly. The, the, this board last changed it, I think more than 15, 20 years ago and the exemptions have, have markedly increased. Uh, so that's just something to discuss next week uh, with regard to uh, the local law. Uh, I am continuing to work on revisions to what was local law one of 2022, I've not forgotten, which is the CPCRB. It is my hope to have that also before the board next week so that they can see that so that uh, not only can the board see it, but that the uh, PRAC can look at it as well at their meeting, which is November the 3rd. So we could, uh, in terms of how things are going there. Uh, and uh, there is a planning board meeting. We talked about the planning board before. The planning board meeting is this Tuesday, October 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, it is both live and via Zoom for folks who wish to watch. The agenda is on uh, is online along with all documents associated with the uh, various applications. So if you're interested, uh, please feel free uh, to watch, review, and if you have any questions, uh, you can contact uh, the planning department uh, with regard to any matters that are on uh, this week's agenda. Uh, finally, there is uh, there are other resolutions, but there is a an, there was an add-on resolution tonight, uh, sort of stop the presses type thing, but it's essentially a resolution uh, to authorize the village manager to sign uh, an agreement with the town with regard to fire protection services. Uh, this will essentially tweak and update the agreement that has was last put into place in 1997, so uh, it will have a new date. Uh, it'll, it'll change the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the amount that the village gets from the town uh, to basically deal with the current uh, calculations that have been provided to us by uh, the village treasurer. So uh, that's on here so that we can keep that going. Uh, and uh, How long is it good for? Well, the, the plan I have to discuss with the town's attorneys, the plan likely would be uh, maybe a, a, a two or three year uh, agreement which would with which would roll over uh, unless either side indicated that they did not want it. The current agreement basically is from 1997, so we just wanted to update. Other other than that, it uh, provides you know uh, the area that you know Austin maintains. Uh, but uh, we just thought it was a good idea to get that agreement out and get it before everybody. So I'll be talking with my counterpart with the town so we can move that one forward. And that's it for the corporation council. So it's permission for the manager to sign a contract. That is clear. Where is the contract? Is it, you said you made some changes to it, right? Change, changes to be made. Changes. Contract is not, we have, a, we have the basic contract from 1997. The primary changes will be current <coughs> and will be the provision currently the agreement the 1997 agreement as the village shall receive payment of $228,452. I believe in the last document of Karen, you sent to me, it was well over, I, I think it was like $548,000 or something like that. Maybe yeah. somewhere in that range. And that number changes depending upon what the budget is for the fire department. And then it's a percentage based upon the percentage of assessed properties in the town. Okay. That percentage formulates that. So we just want to sort of put that in there okay. so that that number is there. But the rest of the agreement is effectively what it was back from 97. Uh, and we will have 
uh, when it be, uh, uh, we will obviously have an agreement for the board to, to review, but this just authorizes the village manager to sign such an agreement. Okay. And we should point out this was brought forward to our attention by a resident. So, you know, we um, do love to hear from our residents um, who question why something has been on the books for so long and outdated. Actually, is isn't outdated. It's because things are in the 1900s doesn't mean they're not effective or shouldn't be effective, but it is time to update. And, I, you know, we have to thank our residents for bringing this to our attention. Sir, did you want to add something? Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, Police Chief Kevin Sylvester. Thank you. I'm going to do what I can for a limited volume I've got left today. Uh, last week, staff members attended the 20th Annual Police Interactive Training, which focuses on family offenses and domestic violence, put on by the Westchester County Office for Women, in conjunction with the Westchester County Chiefs Police Association and the DA's office. We completed our last movies in the park for the season last week. It's just too cold now, as well as camping under the stars that was well attended. And yesterday, uh, Lieutenant Donahue, Detective Chavez, and I returned from the International Association of Chiefs Police Conference in Dallas, Texas, where we attended sessions on uh, creating cultural change in police departments, first amendment auditors, leadership, wellness, and then after action reports for the Colerville synagogue hostage situation and the insurrection at the Capitol. Detective Chavez and I also presented on our uh, multi-language communications plan, which I understand has been adopted immediately by at least three other cities in the United States now. So a uh, proud moment for us. Uh, coming up this uh, next week, we'll have our Halloween trunk or treat event on the 31st from 6 to 8 on Main Street. We're looking forward to that. I think I'm out of gas. That's all for tonight. Oops, I'm in pain listening. <laughs> Sorry. The, the... Did you catch something or are you just losing your voice? I don't, I don't really I prefer not to discuss oh, okay. I feel like I'm in pain. I hope you get better. Um, uh, is there anybody who would like to make an organizational announcement? Um, you can raise your virtual hand. Is there anybody, Jane? No, I'm here. I, I can't hear anymore. Oh, hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Is there anybody who'd like to make an organizational announcement? Okay. See? It doesn't look like anyone in the gallery has got their arm, their hands up, okay. or their arm for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody here who would like to address the board on any of the resolutions on tonight's agenda? If so, please raise your virtual hand. Nobody? Uh, going on to our village board resolutions, approve the minutes of October 6, 2022. As well as the board of trustees of the village of Austin, hereby approve the minutes. I'm going to take a five minute break before you get going on this part. Just a couple of minutes break. <laughs> setting expectations everybody will be happy okay uh village board resolutions approval minutes october 6 2022 as well as the board of trustees of the village of austin hereby approve the minutes of the october 6 2022 regular meeting as presented so second all those in favor aye, aye. Approval of Act 3 Detail October 19, 2022, as well as the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby approves the Act 3 Detail Report dated October 19, 2022, in the amount of $270,181.52. So have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments? Martha? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Uh, resolution approval of honorary naming of the corner of State Street and Academy Place for Dr. George W. Hill as Dr. George W. Hill Street. Whereas the purpose of the honorary street naming policy policy approved by the Village of Austin Board of Trustees is to honor current and former residents of the village who have made contributions to the village through accomplishments during the honorary's lifetime. And whereas on or about July 7, 2022, the village manager received a letter from Altima Gonson on behalf of the Dr. George W. Hill Legacy Center requesting that the corner of State Street and Main Street or State Street and Academy Place be named Dr. George W. Hill Street to honor Dr. George W. Hill, first black physician in Austin, activist and community leader who impacted the lives of countless Austin residents, past and present. And whereas, pursuant to the honorary street naming policy, the Board of Trustees by resolution referred the application to the village restoring for a report. And whereas, on or about August 9, 2022, village restoring Joy Chirac Cole provided to the Board of Trustees her report on the application, which included a summary of Dr. Hill's contributions to the village of Austin. And whereas, the historian's report noted the following. Dr. Hill moved to Austin in September 1934 to start his medical practice just one year after graduating from medical school. He later told the Citizen Register, I was told that the community Austinian was not one that would support a Negro physician. It was a challenge. One of Dr. Hill's missions was to provide quality, affordable medical care to the Black community. Dr. Hill was more than a doctor to those who entrusted him with their care. He was a friend to the Austinian community. It is almost impossible to talk to 10 people from old Austinian that were not a patient or were brought into the world by Dr. Hill. By 1968, he had 1,600 patients, half of whom were white. He spearheaded many projects that addressed the social, economic, and advancement of the entire community with a practical focus on the Black community. He founded in 1938 the Austin Negro Civic Organization, which was instrumental in working with the village to dedicate a memorial in honor of the late Reverend Henry Edward George. The organization also was instrumental in, in the appointment of the first Black police officer in the village and the opening of, after World War II, a number of employment opportunities previously closed to Black people. Dr. Hill founded the Corporate Scholarship Fund, which provides scholarships to Black graduating seniors at Austin High School. This scholarship remains today. Whereas the village historians also noted the following statement from the Village Board of Trustees after Dr. Hill's death on May 31st, 1974. Dr. George W. Hill was truly one of Austin's leading citizens. The village board deeply regrets his death and is sincerely appreciative of his far-reaching influence. He affected the lives of a great many people here, not only in his role as physician, but in much wider roles as a compassionate friend and advisor. He will remember for his selfless response to human needs in our community. And whereas, pursuant to the policy, a public hearing was held on the application on October 5, 2022, at which time members of the public were given the opportunity to address the Board of Trustees on the application, after which the public hearing was closed. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the application for the honorary street naming of the corner of State Street in a Canary Place as Dr. George W. Hill Street is granted and be it further resolved that appropriate signage will be located at the aforementioned corner. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments? We discussed this in length um, a week ago um, with all parties concerned. Very exciting, family member as well. Uh, very um, excited uh, to be part of this historic moment. We will coordinate a date when the actual um, naming and signage will be uh, posted. We'll let the public know. But uh, I think for now, uh, we'll go to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approval of on permit for 125 Main Street Beyonce Court Joker's restaurant is all that pursuant to the Village of Austin Code Section 239-5, the Village of Austin Board of Trustees approved the application by 125 Main Street Beyonce Court on behalf of Joker's restaurant 125 Main Street 89.19-6-5. For the installation of an awning in accord with the application received by the Village of Austin Building Department or about August 4th, 2022. I'll Second. Comments? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Sorry, go ahead. Call for public hearing. Proposed Local Law 11 of 2022. Title A Local Law Amending Chapter 241 Taxation of the Village of Austin Code. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby call for a public hearing to take place at 7.30 p.m. on November 16, 2022, to consider proposed Local Law 1, 2022, titled A Local Law Amending Chapter 241 Taxation of the Village of Austin and Code. It be further resolved that the members of the public are invited to attend the public hearing in person at the above reference location. It be further resolved that for those members of the public who want to attend slash participate in the public hearing remotely, access will be available via the Zoom platform. It be further resolved. The comments regarding the proposed local law will be accepted by the Board of Trustees at BOT at VillageBoston.org. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Is there any continuing business to the board? 
This will look like it. Okay. New business of the board authorizing the village manager to sign an agreement with Alera Group to evaluate health insurance coverage. Is on the point of view of the corporation council, the village manager is authorized to sign an agreement with the corporate clients incorporated doing business on Alera Group of Syracuse, New York, to perform a comprehensive analysis of the village of Austin's medical benefits for active and retired employees at a cost not to exceed $13,000. Do I have a motion? So moved. Comments? Um, I'll just make one. Every uh, few years, we do this evaluation. It's uh, the right due diligence. Um, I think the last one was three to four years ago, if memory serves, is that right? Um, so this is something that we do. We're self-insured. We're a little bit of an odd bird out there. That doesn't make that the wrong thing to do. In fact, I think many would say they've been very happy uh, with that. But every few years, especially with escalating um, prices and changing their um, health insurance environment. It's just the right thing to do. So I think it's worth a, a look and see what kind of results you get and analysis you get. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Authorizing the village manager to sign an agreement with the town of Austin for fire protection services. Result of the following review by the corporation council the village manager is authorized to sign an agreement with the town of Austin whereby the Austin Volunteer Fire Department will provide primary fire protection services and the unincorporated of the town of Austin in mutual aid in the secondary area of fire protection as the binding agreement in the answer calls in the secondary area of fire protection when the OBFD is summoned by mistake or when public safety requires that such fire protection is provided without delay. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments? I guess we already oh, I think that, that's just going to, you know, with what the comment that you made to me here in regards to that, I would like to see the agreement before it gets signed, obviously. I think it's important for us to me. It's very similar to an IMA uh, portion because we have so many with the town. So, Manny, we can't hear you. We're gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> he's speaking, sorry, he's practically swallowing a mic. Basically, <laughs> it's just our responsibility to look at things like this, and I think Manny is requesting that we see the contract. Uh, before it goes to the final step. Did I get that right? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Is that better, Tim? Or maybe not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anybody here from the public who would like to address the board on issues not related we, to the public? We didn't tell her we were both. Oh, sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Did you leave? Yeah. The gentleman that was yeah. there? Yeah. No, I think he. Okay. Is there I'm anybody here? Who would like to address the board on issues not related to the agenda but are relevant to the common good of the village? So please put your virtual hand. It doesn't look like anyone is putting their hand up. Okay, so then can I have um, a motion and a second um, to adjourn to executive session for matters of personnel and real property? So moved. Second. Comments? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you, do you have a comment? No, but what do I do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you so. <laughs> it was a great meeting. <laughs> so uh, this concludes our meeting. Uh, it's uh, 8 uh, 55. Thank you all. We are in session again next Wednesday. Uh, please join us then. Good night. I'm sure to consider you when you have like person show up.